If you're into base building games then you've probably already heard of Satisfactory and you probably already know about Factorio, but which should you sink your time into? Let's put them side by side and see which one is best. Satisfactory, like Factorio, is a factory building game set in the future. And in Satisfactory, like Factorio, you find yourself on a strange planet and you're expected to gather the resources required to build a factory from the ground up to help you escape. You start with simple harvesting machines and conveyor belts, move on to machines that make components for you and eventually your factory assembles these bits into other machinery and so on. Satisfactory is likely out next year. There is an alpha test on right now and if you go to the Satisfactory website, you can find the link in the description below, you'll be able to find a site you can hopefully sign up for an alpha test or a beta test as they roll out. No promises though, they're keeping the tests very small right now. Satisfactory is made by Coffee Stain, the makers of Goat Simulator. And before you laugh, don't forget that Goat Simulator is quite a lot of fun and if you want a fun game, these guys look like the team to help you build it. How does Satisfactory compare with Factorio? Well, Factorio was released in 2016 on Steam, but was available for purchase on the Woob Software website for a couple of years before then. Factorio has the distinct honor of being among the most top rated games on Steam, currently sitting at number 5 with a 98% approval rating. And over the many years since its early release and then full release, the game has continued to develop with many deep, rich and to be fair fairly complex systems being shown front and center. In Factorio, like Satisfactory, you're tasked with building a factory that can gather resources to produce research components defensive system and the parts you need to build a massive factory. Towards the end game you'll use this factory to assemble parts of a rocket which if you launch officially marks the end of the game. Although it's very simple and straightforward to continue playing and expanding your complex system. The game is loved for its complexity and depth. It scales wonderfully with the player as the player learns. What seems to be a fairly simple system rapidly reveals itself to be a fascinating complex series of moving parts the player masters as they learn. There's also a great modding community that is actively putting out content even this many years after release. New maps, new ways of playing, new ideas for various parts, components, even more complex systems are constantly being added to the game. If we're comparing the two games, it seems sensible to start by looking at the visuals. The most easily recognizable difference. Satisfactory is a wonderfully lush with very rich environments, trees, forests, various biomes to explore, fantastic vistas. Few of them have been shown off in videos by Coffee Stain already, and clearly it's well thought out, visually stunning looking game. Even the factory parts themselves with their brass and shiny pieces and moving elements contrast beautifully with the lush surrounds that you find yourself in. In addition to the look of the factories and the various other visuals, there's a really full and complete day-night cycle which really does lend the world a very living feeling. And on top of that there are a ton of creatures all displaying different behaviors from the wonderful lizard doggo that people have found that you can pet through to other strange beasts of wonder and delight that we don't quite know yet what we're going to do with probably beat up comparing this to factorio and factorio really pales in comparison it has a very simple color palette that at times is mostly a sort of muddy brown reminds me a lot of good old command and conquer there's not really much of a day-night cycle. There is daytime and there's nighttime and it's darker at night than day, but other than that, you don't really notice much difference. There's no weather or other kinds of visual effects to give you uh, much feeling of variety in the world. And there isn't really much of a sense of biomes either, although there are kind of forested areas and bleak areas. That being said, the look is very effective and the way the factory parts are laid out makes it very easy to see from afar what's going on. You can very easily spot what parts are coming in and out of the system, see where there's backlogs, see where things are built up, and also spot where shortages might lie in your production. There's also a lot of movement in the game. Your factory is constantly shuffling items around on belts. There are inserters which grab bits, take them off belts, shove them in factories and pull them out again when they've been manufactured into something else. These really help give the game a sort of a live feel. You can watch your system grow, expand, and feel satisfied at the wonderful machinery you've unleashed upon the world. 
Sound effects compared to satisfactory appear to be a lot more simple, but that's probably what you'd expect of the difference between a full 3D game and a game that's more familiar to us as a simple 2D looking game like Factorio. Comparing features and the games even up a little bit more in what you might expect from them. Now of course Satisfactory is not out yet, so a lot of what I'm going to say is based on what has been published. However, it's fair to say that the developers know what they're doing and they've been pretty conservative and pretty direct about what is in and is out of the game. They haven't overpromised anything. I think they're probably going to be pretty true to their word, so let's look at both games side by side. Both games are or are going to be multiplayer. Four players is pretty much what you might expect in Satisfactory. Factorio can take a fair number more than that. The intent behind Satisfactory is that players will enjoy uh, playing with their friends and four players gives everyone something to do without the game just sprawling into some kind of chaos. And I think they're probably feeling pretty confident that they can give everyone a good experience at four players without having a sort of slowed down or massively complex or buggy server based system. I'm just speculating though, who really knows? It's fair to say that both games feature a deep resource gathering and automation game loop, which should be quite a bit of fun. It is worth noting however that despite much prodding from the community, Satisfactory will not include any pipe based or fluid based systems. There's no oil which you need to shove into pipes and ship across and store in giant tanks or anything like that. That stuff does exist in Factorio and can be quite an interesting subsystem to manage compared to all the conveyor belts. However, that won't be any focus in Satisfactory and considering Satisfactory has you deal with construction in 3D, I kind of can't blame them for not wanting to add that layer of extra complexity into what's already going to be a fairly complex system. Factorio has more systems, more production chains, more items to deal with as far as we can tell, uh, both fluids and obviously as we talked about pipes, along with stuff that goes on conveyor belts. That is perhaps a good thing, but then again a lot of people find Factorio quite hard and there were some kind of surprising stats about the number of people who have actually completed a Factorio game that has gone all the way through to launching a rocket and it's actually quite a small percentage of the community. I think Satisfactory definitely aims to be a touch more accessible for the average player and to allow depth for those players who really want to get into interesting optimization without any so much complexity that people get put off right early on. Another big change is that Satisfactory features direct injection of items into factories. You don't have to mess around with uh, inserters as they're called in Factorio which move items from belts to machinery. That makes things a little less complex for Satisfactory it does take away some of the interesting optimizations that are possible in Factorio that I know give power players a whole lot of pleasure. Will it be good or bad for things to be a touch simpler and a touch more easy to solve? I don't know yet, we'll have to find out. One distinct advantage that Satisfactory has, or at least a very interesting feature, is the fact that there's a lot going on in three dimensions. It's clear from the videos and gameplay that stacking stuff in three dimensions will make factories more compact and arguably even uh, make them a bit easier to handle because you'll be able to sort of parallel process goods and services into the three dimensions rather than have them all spread out into massive sprawl. That will make building factories a little bit more interesting and allow perhaps for more variety in factory designs. In Factorio there does tend to be a trend towards a certain type of factory and if you play Factorio you've probably heard of what a main bus is and what that means. That is not perhaps going to be the case in Satisfactory. I'm sure there will be optimal routes for building and developing factories. However, there perhaps are a few more options on the table with how things are laid out, considering the way that terrain and three-dimensional building will allow people more variety in what they get up to. Vehicles is one area where Satisfactory probably has the advantage over Factorio. In Factorio you can automate trains and there are flying robots that can help you out building and servicing items. However that's pretty much it, you can drive tanks and you can also drive a buggy yourself. But in Satisfactory you have uh, small uh, buggies to go exploring, you have tractors which are kind of a small transport vehicle, trucks which are a large transport vehicle and trains. And the trucks, tractors and trains all can be automated with routes plotted either on tracks if it's a train or over the ground, just driven around and 
following a route that you decide yourself. So that could offer some very interesting automation options for players beyond just simple train routes. An area where the games are quite different is that Satisfactory features no mobs, no monsters that are going to come and attack your base, whereas Factorio absolutely does. In Factorio, the biters, which are there by default, are kind of an aggressive creature that as your base or as your factory grows and spreads pollution, they'll come out and try and destroy your factory. That produces quite a tense and interesting dynamic in the game. You can expand relatively easily, but as you do so, you need to be able to defend your base. And you can't just rely on the player to do it. You have to set up automated systems. And that's an interesting challenge. That won't be present in Satisfactory. However, the devs have said that Really the main reason for that is it's hard to get around at speed in a game like Satisfactory. In Factorio, while it is true that the maps are huge, crossing your factory never takes more than 30 seconds. Whereas in Satisfactory, it's clear that being a first person game in full 3D, it could take you quite a while to reach all the various outposts and bits and bobs associated with your factory. This would make defending a factory from attack potentially pretty difficult to achieve. I could see the devs potentially adding aggressive creatures and more challenge in later game editions. I get the feeling listening to them that they're very very conscious about not promising the earth and delivering a core experience that's really good and then responding to what the community wants in the future with additional content. I certainly hope that is the case because I think perhaps aggressive mobs for power players along with systems that they have to build to defend against them would be quite a fun challenge. Another area where the games are quite different lies in the logic and automation features that are available in Factorio. We don't have any indication that we'll have logic systems available in Satisfactory uh, yet. Again, that's something that might come in the future and may not even be that necessary in the game as it stands now. In the future, it could be quite a fun addition, but again, uh, I think the developers there at Coffee Stain are keen on making sure the core experience is really fun. But Factorio definitely has the lead in the advanced and complex automation systems that are there for the player to mess with. In summary, Factorio has the many years of established development work, massive loyal community, and although an antiquated visual style, a kind of depth that attracts base builder and system builder players to a very great degree, and satisfactory is pretty much the new kid on the block. It's flashier, it's showier, but it still offers a lot of promise with developers who clearly know what they're doing. Which one would I recommend? Well, who am I kidding? I know you're going to play both of them. If you haven't already, play Factorio now, sign up for the Satisfactory Alpha and be ready to jump on it when it comes out. As far as I'm concerned, it looks pretty fantastic. Anyway, I've been Sunny Pirate. This has been a Versus episode. I hope you've enjoyed it. If you have, then do like and subscribe and do all the bell and notification thingy bobbies because that really helps the channel out. Until next time, good night. <laughs>